Hi, I thought I'd show you what the prototype board for the digital control part of the power supply module that I've been working on looks like. Um, the purpose of this uh, part of the power supply is to provide a programmable digital control and monitoring of the power supply itself. Uh, a microcontroller here uh, is at the heart of the control system. It's a microchip PIC 18F2523. Uh, I chose the part because it provides the right combination of onboard peripherals and I.O. including um, a 12-bit ADC. The onboard ADC doesn't really have enough resolution to measure the precision regulator feedback that I require, but it is definitely useful for um, other analog measurements that do not need to be that precise. So, for example, the, uh, the pre-regulator output and the temperature monitoring. The controller itself is running at uh, 32 megahertz. Uh, actually, it's using the onboard 8 megahertz oscillator and a four times um, PLL, um, which which jacks it up to 32 megahertz. In the current design, pretty much all of the pins on the microcontroller are used. Uh, that's a 28-pin device, so um, so it's it's uh, pretty pretty packed. And um, I don't think I need to increase the size of that chip. It's it's good enough as it is. Um, the board uses a single master voltage reference, and I've set that to 4.096 volts. Uh, and that's in the form that's right here. It's a tiny little MSOP 8 package, and it's a Linear Technologies part LTC 6652-4096. Provides a reference voltage um, for the onboard ADC, uh, for the DAC, um, so it's all, all consistent. Um, the part is actually only available in that package, so I've had to put uh, uh, this, this adapter board, I've had to make use of that adapter board. Um, they're, they're interesting devices to solder. Yeah. The chip underneath, uh, that chip right there, uh, which you can only see part of, that's a, that's a 14 pin um, dual inline uh, plastic package. Um, and that's the microchip MCP4922, which is a dual a dual channel, 12-bit digital to analog converter. The analog to digital chip, the ADC converter up here, uh, is an, a, another Linear Technologies part. Uh, this time, an LTC2402, which is a dual input 24-bit delta sigma converter. Although well, stated as a dual channel device, actually it's probably better described as a single channel um, device with two inputs. Um, internally, only one of the ADC channels is actually sampled at any one time. It's, um, and and the, the input multiplex that's built into the chip will switch between them. The data sheet says that uh, it's good for 6.2 samples a second. In reality, um, it's actually only good for half that per channel. So if you want to use the full speed, you in effect have to either only sample one channel continuously, um, which you can do in software, or you need to tie both inputs and, uh, and sample both channels. Um, I'll, I'll explain why that's relevant in a second, because in the, in the design that's actually important. Uh, the, other, the other chip worth uh, pointing out on this board is uh, a, a very simple 74HC4053 part. Uh, that's a simple uh, triple, triple, one of two analog switch. Um, under normal working conditions, the two outputs of the DAC drive the control signals of the regulator circuit. So in 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 this power supply, that's amps and volts. And actually, those two signals come out on on these four pins, and you'll see these these are bridged. So right now, I'm bridging the the control output to the monitored input, um, and and therefore the board assumes. The regulator um, is in place, and it's it's effect effectively monitoring its own output, and that's what we're using for testing. Um, the, in in order to trim errors out in the DAC, and I've gone into um, the 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 error the errors that you get out of a, a digital to analog converter, it's to do with uh, internal nonlinearity. Uh, but but what what I need to do here is trim out the errors each time I set a new code. And so what the 4053 does is that at the point where we set a new code, the analog switch switches both inputs of the ADC to one of the outputs of the DAC. Um, that gives me uh, 6.2 samples a second on that output, and that's the rate at which I can um, run an algorithm to, to trim the, the, the output. The, and the, the, the purpose there, and the reason why that's done, is simply to, to make the 
calibration cycle as fast as it can possibly, uh, can po possibly go. Once the calibration is complete, then the analog switch will revert back and once again start monitoring the, monitoring the output. And we'll see that later on when I, when I talk through the software. Um, the, agency is, as I say, it's, the agency is configured to run as fast as it can. can. It has a mode where um, you tell it to um, convert and each time it does a conversion, it, it indicates it's ready, you read it, it starts the next conversion and so on. So it's running as fast as uh, you, it possibly can. And actually the LED here is blinking one, once for each time that the microcontroller reads the um, value read from the last sample. Uh, so the, 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 the rate at which that's blinking is as fast as the ADC is able to sample. And if you, were, if you wanted to know the, the rate at which it samples a single channel, then you would half that speed effectively. It's a good visual cue actually this LED um, apart from that this is running not on an interrupt this is running in the main software loop. Uh, interrupts are running in the background for doing uh, modulation on the DAC which we'll talk about in a second and also interrupts are running on the serial interface. Uh, it, it's useful having that, that visual indicator there because apart from um, giving you a sense of the, the, the rate at which it's sampling it also uh, becomes a good cue when your software or when the firmware in here starts to overload. For example, if you're driving the serial port at too high a rate and you start getting buffer overruns and so on, the software has to handle that and you, you, you can see the effect in the, in the flashing rate of the LED. Um, pro programming um, the regulator circuitry through here is actually done through uh, an RS232 style connection which is which is here. Uh, the connection runs at currently at 19,200 19, board and it's optically isolated. That's, that's intended for the, uh, the final design um, but it's, it's optic, op, 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 optically isolated here. Um, I wasn't actually planning to include opto isolation, but in practice, what I found was if I connected the computer directly to to the board, uh, I generated a lot of noise, or I, I introduced a lot of noise. Actually, and the noise was well above the the noise floor here, um, and I'll sh I'll show you that in a second. I'll show you that that, that happening. Um, to combat that, uh, I literally built something very very fast, just a very simple uh, opto isolator, pair of opto isolators. This is all running at TTL level, so that's there. And the other side of that is a, uh, a simple serial interface, which is next here. Is a is a simple USB to hopefully you can see that a USB to serial adapter um, running at 3.3 volts. So very very straightforward. Um, I'm just going to. Move the camera for a second and just uh, show you the scope trace. I can hopefully. Okay. So if you uh, if you look at this, uh, the two scope traces here, uh, what you're looking at is the output of the DAC uh, before and after the low pass filter. So the top trace um, is the is the output of the DAC, and right now the output the the DAC output is being modulated, and we'll come on to why that is in a second. Um, but the, the, the second trace at the bottom there is the output of the low-pass filter that follows the DAC. Um, you can see the, 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 the lower signal actually has a very gentle uh, ripple on it. Hopefully you can see that on the scope. Uh, it, it measures around about 160 microvolts AC in the ripple. Um, which you know it's, it's not it's not fantastic. It's it's I, I'd like it to be better than that. Um, the square wave signal. Um, just talk, talking about the modulated output for a second. The firmware is essentially switching between two adjacent codes. Now, if you remember, um, I'm driving the um, DAC from a reference of 4.096 volts. Um, the DAC is a 12-bit, which gives us four 4,096 steps. So that's conveniently one millivolt per step. And if you look at the scope trace here, we're there or thereabouts one millivolt. That's what we're reading. This is two millivolts per division. Um, so, so that's what we're seeing. So what the what the, the square wave is showing there is it's switching between um, two adjacent codes. Um, clearly, the signal here is AC coupled in in, in both cases, um, which is which is and the scope is set to two millivolts of division, 
uh, wound right up to the max. That's the best of the, the best I can achieve with the scope. The low pass filter here is a very simple first order um, filter. It's a series resistor, 4.7k, and a an electrolytic capacitor uh, to ground 10 microfarads. Uh, it has a roll off of about 13 hertz. Uh, the modulation speed running uh, um, is running at one kilohertz, which means depending on the uh, modulation state of the um, uh, of the code, the particular code selected means the low pass filter will see anything from 500 hertz to 250 hertz. I don't actually, you know, coming back to the point about the ripple, I don't, I don't really like the ripple on the output, and uh, you know, I'm not sure there. There's only really two solutions. One is to increase the resolution of the DAC, um, which uh, which starts to get expensive, and the other one is to improve the low pass filter, and that just starts to get you know, complicated from a circuitry point of view. So it, it is what it is. I mean, the, 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 out, the output, you know, the final outcome of using this particular DAC, this 12-bit DAC, is actually the resolution is just not good enough. So I have to, I have to look. So I've, I've set that aside for now, but, but nonetheless, um, you know, two, two, uh, 200 microvolts of ripple on a, uh, a regulator um, gain of 10 is going to give me you know, two two millivolts, two or three millivolts of ripple, and that's that's to me that's that's too much. Uh, I'd certainly like to achieve better than that. Um, I thought well, also while looking at the scope, talk, I was talking about the opto isolator that you know introduces. Um, I, I I put it there because it in, because connecting the board that I'm testing under directly to the computer introduces noise. And I thought while we're looking at the scope, I'll just do that. What I'm going to do is connect the uh, ICSP. To the computer, uh, to the uh, board, which is directly connected to the computer, so it has the same effect. And you'll see what happens. Um, basically, the the noise that I'm measuring now swamps um, the noise that I'm seeing on the board. Um, now completely swamps the the um, the signals that we were looking at. So clearly, opto isolation is very important. Um, it wasn't something I'd anticipated necessarily. I hadn't really thought it through. Um, but uh, anyway, that, that, was, that was the outcome, that's where I had to get to with that. Uh, let me just reset. reset that. Okay, uh, just, just before we go and look at the software, I just wanted to take a quick, a t a quick tour around the test setup, which really isn't that complicated, um, but it's probably worth you uh, seeing what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so, so the board here is connected, um, obviously connected to the computer, uh, via a serial interface, as we've talked about already, that's that one here. Um, there's two scope probes, uh, one monitoring the, the input and output of the, uh, the one channel of the DAC uh, and the low-pass filter, and I've got a Hewlett-Packard um, 34401A meter here, which I'm monitoring the, uh, the voltage output of the, um, of, of the board also after the low-pass filter. So. What the Hewlett Packard is is reading there is the voltage it can see um, uh, on the output of the of the DAC. Okay, so uh, so uh, and the the three forty four oh one A is also connected directly to the computer via another serial interface, and I'm using that in the software to do readbacks. That's a, in, in effect the um, the reference um, meter that I'm using. That meter is also calibrated, so it should be should it, should be pretty accurate. All right, next up is the uh, software control panel. I'll, I'll show you that now.